So let's move on and discuss bone scans. Bone scans are very commonly performed. The radioisotope that's used is technetium 99M again, and the pharmaceutical is methylene diphosphonate or MDP. The images are usually obtained about four hours after injection, which allows them to take to be which allows the radio tracer to be taken up into the bones. So bone scans are really the best method for screening for bony metastases. It's the most sensitive to evaluate for fractures that are also not visualized on radiography. So usually when a patient comes in for a fracture, the first modality would be a plain film to see if we can see the fracture. If not, then the next step could be a bone scan, which would provide a very sensitive evaluation for a fracture. However, it's not very specific. So anything such as a fracture, degenerative changes, metastases, or even osteomyelitis will produce increased uptake. And so when you see increased uptake on a bone scan, it's hard for, it's hard for us to differentiate what may be going on. And the clinical scenario has to really be taken into account. So metastases appear as multiple asymmetric areas of increased uptake. Radio tracer is taken up by areas of greatest bone turnover. And so blastic metastases, for these reasons, demonstrate increased uptake. However, if you have a purely lytic metastasis, that may be missed because you don't have a lot of bone turnover in a purely lytic metastasis. So this is an example of a normal bone scan. Usually, we have anterior and posterior images obtained to take a better look at all of the structures. And you can see here that there's symmetric uptake in the visualized bony structures. So you have the shoulders here, which have symmetric bilateral uptake. You have normal uptake within the spine, and then you have symmetric uptake within both lower extremities here, as well as both upper extremities here. Somewhat prominent uptake within the skull is also expected, and that's normal. And then this focus down here is urinary bladder because of excretion of radio tracer into the bladder. Just as a note, this patient actually has a slight lumbar spine scoliosis, which you can see right here as a turning of the spine. So let's take a look at this bone scan. How does this look different from the one that we just saw? So you can actually see here multiple asymmetric areas of uptake within the ribs. You have multiple areas within the ribs right here, which are asymmetric from the other side. You have areas of increased uptake within the pelvis. So this area right here stands out much more significantly than the area on the right side over here. You also have asymmetric uptake within the shoulder. So the right shoulder has more uptake than the left shoulder does. This patient actually has metastatic breast carcinoma. And this was known prior to performing the bone scan so that we know that these areas of uptake are related to bony metastases. Cardiac scans are also very commonly performed as a nuclear medicine examination. It's also called a myocardial perfusion scan or myocardial perfusion imaging. And the radiopharmaceuticals that are used can be multiple. Two of them are technetium-99 labeled, or we can also use thallium-201. So what are the indications for cardiac imaging? It can be used to evaluate for myocardial ischemia or infarction. It can also be used to detect wall motion abnormalities, because again, you have to remember that nuclear medicine is a physiologic functional examination. We can use myocardial perfusion imaging to calculate left ventricular ejection fraction as well. So cardiac images are obtained at both stress and rest, and the two are then compared. So the stress is, can be performed in a couple of different ways. It can be exercise induced, such as running on a treadmill. However, for patients that can't exercise, it can also be pharmacologic. So the patient can be given adenosine, dobutamine, or dipyrimidol prior to the examination, the stress portion of the examination. This is an example of a normal cardiac scan. So images are obtained in three different planes. We have short axis, we have horizontal long axis, and then we have vertical long axis. The top row of images shows the, shows, um, the exam performed under cardiac stress, and then the bottom row of each set is performed at rest. So we have short axis stress, short axis rest, and then we have horizontal long axis stress, horizontal long axis rest, and then this is the vertical long axis stress and vertical long axis rest. And then again, these are all compared. So let's take a look at this scan here. See how it differs from the prior one that we looked at. 
On these images, again, let's take a look at this row here. This is the horizontal long axis. And these up here are the stress images. These down here are the rest images. So in the normal heart, the stress and rest images should have normal flow to all aspects of the heart. It should be the same at both stress and rest. However, if you look at these stress images here, you can see an area of photopenia, which isn't present on the rest images. So under stress, this heart is losing blood flow to this portion. So this is called a defect on the stress portion of the images, and it improves on rest, which is consistent with ischemia. If the defect persists on both the rest and the stress images, then that represents an infarction. So you can also perform EKG-gated SPECT images. EKG gating refers to a technique of acquiring images based on the EKG rhythm. So the images are obtained at the same point in the cardiac cycle each time. This allows for evaluation of wall motion abnormalities, and this can also be performed as one of the ways of performing a cardiac scan. So let's move on to thyroid scans. The radiopharmaceutical that's used for a thyroid scan can either be radioactive iodine or technetium-99 protectinate. Thyroid scans are used to perform the function to look at the functionality of nodules and the functionality of the entire thyroid gland. There can be cold nodules or there can be hot nodules. Cold nodules are those that demonstrate decreased uptake. So the rest of the gland has normal uptake, but the cold nodule has less uptake than the rest of the gland. Hot nodules demonstrate increased uptake from the rest of the gland. So nodules are actually a very common finding, and they're often evaluated even on ultrasound. However, the functionality can only be assessed on a thyroid scan. Majority of the nodules are benign, and solitary cold nodules are actually more likely to represent a carcinoma than hot nodules are. Nodules can also be evaluated by ultrasound, and if sampling is needed, they can be sampled using ultrasound-guided fine needle aspiration. So this is an example of a normal thyroid scan. And this is compared, so this is the normal right here, and this is compared with an abnormal scan on this side. So you can see normal symmetric uptake within the thyroid gland on the normal scan. You don't see any areas that appear photopenic and you don't see any areas that appear bright. However, on the scan on the right, you can see two different areas. This one right here in the lower lobe on the right, which demonstrates a hot nodule. And in the left upper lobe, we actually have an area of photopenia, which is an example of a cold nodule. So in this patient, the next step would probably be to perform an ultrasound, and then depending on what that looks like, the patient likely needs an ultrasound-guided fine needle aspiration of the cold nodule that's in the left upper lobe. Radioactive thyroid ablation can also be performed by a nuclear medicine radiologist. It actually requires significantly higher doses of radioactive iodine. I-131 is the one that's used, and that can ablate the gland, and this is done in patients that have either Graves' disease or thyroid carcinoma. So in this lecture, we've reviewed nuclear medicine in general, how it's different than the rest of radiology, and how it represents more functional or physiologic imaging than the rest of radiology does. And we've gone over some very common nuclear medicine examinations and gone over some abnormal findings that can be seen in each one.